What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power Play with CJ. I want to react to a piece written by ESPN's John Buchigross. Obviously, I love me some Bucci Mane as much as the next guy, but on a, on a truly serious note, I think he really hit on a few key issues that, that I've hopped on, um, you know, with regards to the lockout. You know, he, he says in it, you know, I'm not an NHL fan. I'm, I'm a hockey fan, and the NHL falls from that. And I think, I, you know, like I said, me talking about college hockey, juniors, and everything else, find something. And, uh, you know, the, the, all the other aspects of hockey that go in the NHL. But also, like, I, I like to hop on the people that really get hurt in the lockout aren't the players, aren't the owners. It's the people that depend on the NHL for revenue. I'm talking about the people that, you know, drive the Zamboni at the God that own a bar or restaurant across the street from an arena. It's really shameful that these people are losing revenue and they'll never make that money back. And I think that's, when you get people like that that are the good, honest, working class people in the U.S. and Canada that, you know, aren't out there to make a million dollars but are living paycheck to paycheck and, you know, really form the backbone of the two great countries, both economically, socially, and politically. You know, and these people are getting screwed out of their, out of their paycheck, um, you know, because Jeremy Jacobs doesn't, isn't making... You know, it's kind of like the scene in uh, Wall Street where Charlie Sheen says to, to Michael Douglas, you know, how many yachts can you water ski behind? You know, how many mansions can you own? And, uh, you know, it's greed. You know, it's corporate greed. It's fine. And, uh, you know, obviously I've reiterated that I'm on the side of the players. But, you know, the players will get their, you know, their endorsement checks. And, you know, when the lockout's over, they'll get their money. And, you know, it all goes round and round. And, but, you know, no, no one will pay the, these arena workers retroactive checks. You know, no one will go into a bar and get, you know, have a few drinks and a, you know, a cheeseburger. Which actually sounds pretty good right about now. Um, you know, in the numbers they would if they were playing field hockey to go and watch a game. But, you know, and I think these are the people that need a voice. And I like to see Butcher Gross really stepping up on it. You know, I think ESPN has done a great job with the guys in sports and with the guys that host shows. Um, you know, Still going back to the roots of columnists. Uh, Stephen A. Smith has written is still a great columnist. Same thing with Skip Bayless, I would say. But I mean, Skip Bay, I, I mean, I like Skip, but is what he is. Tebow. 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 But, um, you know, to go back to a more serious note, you know, no one's given a vote, you know. Um, but hopefully, like I said, something gets done. Because these are people that there's no one to speak up for. And, uh, you know, like I said, the owners don't care. The players are in it. I mean, the players have a short window to make a lot of money to set them for life, and they are out for themselves. The owners are just self-centered, greedy. And he talks about it. You know, if you're, majority of the owners inherited the team from somebody else. You know, their their family. You know, they're they're lucky to be born into a good situation. And a lot of these people that work in the arenas and that own bars and really didn't have that right, but they work hard for for their money. And uh, you know, they're people to be proud of that that go to work every day, just like so many people around the country and around the world. And, uh, you know, I, I, it's heartbreaking to see what's happening to them. But hopefully, like I said, something gets done because, uh, you know, I don't want to read as great as, as great an article or a column as it was by, by John Gucci Ross. I don't want to be reading stuff like that. I want to be reading about, you know, Stamkos having four goals, Claude Giroux having five assists, uh, you know, Marty Brodeau setting some new record for shutouts, uh, you know, Yakupov yeah, being rookie of the year, stuff like that. So... Hopefully it gets done, but if not, you know, it really is a shame and it's, it's disgraceful that the NHL is going to come down to this. And the other thing I really like what he said is um, having a legend from the team that wins the cup present the cup instead of Bevin, because Bevin's been booed by every time he's presented the cup for the last you know, 20 years. So uh, I think that'd be pretty cool. Like this year, I would have had, had Gretzky present the cup. The Bruins, I would have had Bobby O present the cup. Chicago, I would have Bobby Hall present the cup. Uh, Pittsburgh, I'd had Mario, Detroit, either CBY or Mr. Hockey, you already have, I'll flip a coin on that one. Carolina, I'd Ron Francis. Tampa Bay, uh, Dino Cicero. <laughs> that, that's a weird one, but anyway, that's all I got this episode of the Power Play with CJ. On my thoughts on the new John Bucci-Gross piece, check it out on ESPN.com. Stay tuned for more episodes of the Power Play with CJ throughout the lockout and beyond. Later, guys.